Hello guys, welcome to the session. Today in the session we are going to discuss some problems, subjective problems based on atomic structure. Okay, so let's start with the session. So the first question here, you can see. If you want to try the question, you can pause the video and try. Right, we'll start discussing the question. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The question is naturally occurring boron consists of two isotopes. Right, consists of two isotopes whose atomic weights given okay the atomic weight of the na natural boron is this calculate the percentage of the each isotope in natural boron okay easy question everything is given just you need to use the formula and get the answer suppose we have two isotope of boron it is given in the question okay so boron has two isotope One has atomic mass 10.01 and the other one has 11.01. Okay, percentage composition we need to find out. Okay, if, each I stop. if it is x, and this we can assume it is 100 minus x. Okay, so the atomic weight of boron, atomic weight equals to. 10.01 into x plus 100 minus x into 11.01 .01 divided by the total composition we are assuming 100 and you have to solve this equation correct so this left hand side the value is 10.81 10.81 10 x plus 1101 minus 11.01 x divided by 100. Okay, so it is x left hand side equals to 1101 minus 1081. So it is 20. right so x is so this one is 20 percent this one is 20 percent and this one is rest of it that is 80 percent present in the mixture right mixture. so answer is 20 percent and 80 percent okay <clears throat> the next one is 59 the energy of electron in the second and the third Bohr's orbit of hydrogen atom is this erg. It is given in erg. Okay. Second and third Bohr orbit is given. Calculate the wavelength of the emitted radiation when the electron drops from third to second okay so the energy that is given in second it is e2 e2 is E2 is equals to, let's write out the data first, minus 5.42 into 10 to the power minus 12 erg. And third, E3 is equals to 
माइनस टू पॉइंट फोर वन इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस ट्वेल्व अर्ग सॉरी अर्ग सिर्फ द इलेक्ट्रॉन जम्प्स फ्रॉम सेकेंड इट से जम्प फ्रॉम थर्ड टू सेकेंड ऑर्बिट राइट डेल्टा ई इज वॉट डेल्टा ई इज ई थ्री माइनस ई टू दैट वुड बी ई थ्री माइनस ई टू सो थ्री पॉइंट जीरो वन ओके वेन यू सॉल्व दिस विल गेट थ्री पॉइंट जीरो वन इंटू टेन टू दावर माइनस ट्वेल्व अर्ग राइट दिस इज डेल्टा ई एंड दिस इक्वल्स टू वी कैन राइट एच सी बाय लांडा okay it is given in erg so we can write down this as 3.01 or lambda is equals to because lambda we need to find out so lambda is equals to 6.6 approximately i am taking 10 to the power minus 27 erg into c we should write down in cgs system so <clears throat> the value is 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second divided by the energy 3.01 10 minus 12 so if you take the approximation then what we can say this 3 and 3 will get cancelled <clears throat> this becomes uh, 10 to the power minus 15 and 10 to the power minus 5 so it is 6.6 To six point six into ten to the power minus five, we are getting. Okay, that is centimeter. We got the serial system centimeter. Centimeter. If you convert this into a uh, angstrom, right? We know one angstrom is equal to ten to the power minus ten meter, or ten to the power minus eight centimeter. <clears throat> okay. So if you multiply this by eight, then by eight six point six into ten to the power three uh, angstrom. So this would be six six zero zero angstrom approximately. Okay, approximate value is this. Okay, the question was not difficult, but you have to take care of units here because erg is given. Remember always, erg is the CGS unit. okay so everything i have taken in cgs here or you can do one more thing you can convert this into joule here by uh, you know 1 joule is equals to 10 to the power minus 7 arg 10 to the power 7 arg right so 1 arg is equals to 10 to the power minus 7 joule so that way also you can convert this into joule and then we can use this unit in angstrom or in si system right So this is the two subjective questions we have you see simple question okay this one okay the electron energy in hydrogen atom is given by this okay in hydrogen atom okay it's given by this calculate the energy required energy required to remove an electron completely from n is equals to 2 orbit n is equals to 2 orbit what is the longest wavelength of light that can be used cause this transition fine so so similarly we can find out delta e right delta e or simply e is equals to hc by lambda we can use okay so in the second energy second orbit
the energy is required to remove an electron is the formula is given hence the question becomes so easier sometimes what happens nowadays they won't give you the formula here so that also you have to memorize so formula is given e is equals to minus 21.7 10 to the power minus 12 by n square erg actually the formula is z square by n square so z is one hence it is hydrogen atom hence the formula becomes this okay so for n is equals to 2 for n is equals to 2 the energy e is minus 21.7 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by 4 so when you solve this you'll get 5.4 approximately from minus 5.42 into 10 to the power minus 12 arg. so this is the energy in second orbit e2 is this energy in the second orbit a2 is this okay so this is the energy required to remove an electron because the energy that is there with the electron the same energy you have to provide in the positive energy so that this negative positive becomes zero and the electrons becomes free okay now the second question is what is the longest wavelength in centimeter of light that can be used to cause this transition okay so usually what happens, this transition happens when we provide the energy and this energy is what? This energy is this. So transition means what? We also calculate, okay, the energy required to remove an electron because you see at infinity, E infinity is zero. That is what the concept we have. And here the electron is free to remove, right? So we have suppose the second orbit here and the infinite orbit suppose we have here second orbit and infinite orbit so if you want to remove this electron obviously you have to provide energy and that energy is the difference here this energy difference this delta e you have to provide right so usually if they ask that what is the energy required to remove an electron what we do if the electron present in nth shell then it is minus 21.7 the formula is into 10 to the power minus 12 1 by n square minus 1 by infinity square because this is the energy required to remove an electron because to remove this electron you have to provide the energy difference between the orbit in which the electron is present and the energy at the infinite orbit which is zero we are Correct. So that is why it says that what is the longest wavelength of light that can be used to cause this transition? Okay, from here to here. Right, because electron, the energy you have to provide in, so you have to provide some uh, energy in the form of light, radiation. So what wavelength we provide so that it gains this much amount of energy and the electron becomes free from the nucleus. So this delta E we have already calculated. That is minus. 5.42 into 10 to the power minus 12 is equals to hc by lambda 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 27 3 into 10 to the power 10 and this divided by the lambda that is a wavelength so when you solve this for wavelength you will get lambda is equals to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 27 into 3 into 10 to the power 10 divided by divided by <clears throat> 5.42 10 to the power minus 2 now again one thing you see here the energy difference is what the energy difference is positive always because we always find out e greater minus like no the we are providing this energy here right so this energy the magnitude is this only so we'll take the magnitude here 
because the negative wavelength does not mean anything. Right, so we'll take the uh, positive energy here. So that's why the magnitude I am taking here positive. So when you solve this, the approximate answer would be, I'll take it as 6.6 .6 into 3 divided by 5.4 into 22, 10 to the power minus 5. Okay. Now, when you solve this, you'll get 19.8 divided by 5.4. So, 19.8 divided by 5.4 is 3 point something get. Okay. So, the approximate answer is 3.67 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter. This is the approximate answer for this. Okay. So, you can <clears throat> see this once. Okay, now the next question you see, question number 62 here. It says, give reason why the ground state of the outermost electronic configuration of silicon is this. Okay, so this one is correct and this one is wrong. The question is why this one is wrong. Obviously, the second one is wrong because according to Hansen, we know that the unpaired electron present in an orbital of same subshell of any orbital unpaired electron present in any orbital must have the same configuration, right? The same spin electron must have. It can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise, but it is not possible that one is clockwise and other one is anti-clockwise. Either you can take all as anti-clockwise or you can take all as clockwise. So according to Hun's, Hun's rule, this is not valid. Hence the answer of this question is, okay? What is the maximum number of electrons that may be present in all the atomic orbitals with principal quantum number three and azimuthal quantum number two, right? <clears throat> okay, look at this question. Principal quantum number three means we can have 3s, we can have 3p, we can have 3d. These three subshells we have. Azimuthal quantum number means L value is 2. So L value for S it is 0, 1, and 2. Okay. So L value is 2. It means it is 3D subshell. Right. And 3D subshell we can have what? We can have 5 orbitals into this. And hence the number of electrons would be <clears throat> would be 5 into 2, that is 10 electrons. That is how you can do this question. <clears throat> okay, we also have the formula here and the formula is the maximum number of electron maximum number of electron electron present in present in a major shell is 2n square is 2n square and a subshell if you have, if it is a subshell, 2 into 2L plus 1, depending upon the L value. So L value is given here, 2, right? So 2 into 2, 
4 plus 1, 5 into 2, 10 electrons here, right? So with the formula also, you can do it directly or logically also, if you have the concept, you can do it easily. Okay, easy one. Next question. According to the Bohr's theory, the electronic energy of hydrogen atom in nth, or nth Bohr's orbit is given by this. It is given in Joule. Calculate the longest wavelength of light that will be needed to remove an electron from third Bohr orbit of He plus. Okay, fine. So He plus we have so E3 for He plus. What we can write? It is minus 21.76 into 10 to the power 19 z, z square by n square. Okay. So for helium, the atomic number is 2. Minus 19 into 2 square by n value is third orbit. So 3 square. So 4 by 9, correct? So when you solve this, it would be two point one four minus into ten to the power nineteen into four. So this is four minus nine point six four into ten to the power minus nineteen Jude. This is the energy we have. Okay. Now for the longest wavelength, longest wavelength is, we know this energy E, the wavelength is associated with HC by lambda is equals to minus 9.64 into 10 to the power minus 19 Joule. So lambda is equals to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34, 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 9.64 into 10 to the power minus 19. Okay, so answer would be in the order of 10 to the power minus 70. Okay, so this would be when you solve this, this thing will get cancelled. We'll have your 10 to the power minus. Oh, so 19 we have no, so it is 17 and then 10 to the minus 7. We have this, and this would be. 19.8 divided by 9.64 into 10 to the power minus 7. <clears throat> so if you solve this, you'll get 2 point something into 10 to the power minus 7 meter, which you can also write in terms of angstrom by multiplying by 1000 in both numerator and denominator. Okay, so answer will be 2 point something into 10 to the power minus 7 meter for this question. If you want to put the answer in terms of angstrom, which is generally we put, right, then we can convert this into angstrom. Okay, easily. You know, 10 to the power minus 10, one, <coughs> one angstrom is equals to 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So that, uh, you know, way we can do this. Okay, the next one you see.
estimate the difference in energy between first and second board orbit of hydrogen atom <clears throat> and at what minimum atomic number a transition from n2 to n1 energy level would result in the emission of x ray with lambda this which hydrogen atom like species does the atomic number correspond to okay so the question is you see the energy estimate the energy difference between first and second board orbit of a hydrogen atom right so e2 minus e1 we need to find out okay we know the energy is the formula of energy e is equals to minus 21.76 into 10 to the power minus 19 z square by n square joule per atom okay then we can find out delta e is equals to e2 minus e1 which is the first part here and that would be minus 21.76 10 to the power minus 19 right it is 1 by e2 right so minus so 1 minus 1 by 4 1 minus 1 by 4 this is what you need to solve so delta e we can find out from this okay so this value you see this question here estimate the estimate the energy difference between this and this which is this is coming out to be 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 is minus 21.76 10 to the power minus 19 into 3 by 4 so it is 5 point something so minus 5.44 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 19 so the answer is 16.32 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule this is the energy we have this is the energy between e2 minus e1 now at what minimum atomic number a transition from n2 to n1 which is this would result that in the emission of x rays with lambda this Right, so wavelength is given here. Okay, wavelength is given. So, first of all, we'll find out, we'll find out what is the, uh, this thing, uh, energy difference we have, which results in this particular wavelength. That is what the question is. Okay, so say similarly, for any atom, we do not know what atom it is. For any atom, if you write down the expression for nth energy, it is equals to what? Minus 21.76 into 10 to the power minus 19 z square by n square. Okay. So it says what atom we have, it says here, what atom we have, right, what hydrogen-like atom species does this atomic number corresponds to, okay. So delta E we know, that is, that is E2 minus E1, according to the question, which is also equals to minus 16.32, 10 to the power minus 19, and this is equals to this is equals to
this is equals to we can write at c by lambda right but we won't use this expression here but we use 21 point minus 21.76 into 10 to the power 19 z is square because this is what we need to find out and 1 by n square is we'll have here when you solve this e2 minus e1 you get 3 by 4 this is equals to at c by lambda 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by lambda value we have 3 into 10 to the power minus 8. So when you solve this expression for z you'll get the atomic number. So basically the question was what that in hydrogen species the energy difference we have between 1 and 2 for what other atoms the energy difference would be same and the wavelength that comes out is this okay this is what we have when you solve this the z value will get z square from this it is approximately 4 you get and hence z value is 2 for this question second one right Sixty-six. What transition in the hydrogen spectrum would have the same wavelength as the Balmer transition for n is equals to four and n is equals to two for H e plus? Okay, this one is also easy. We know the wavelength formula: one by lambda is equals to R H for hydrogen atom, then Z is square. 1 by four to two, right? So 1 by nf square minus 1 by ni square. Okay. So what transition in hydrogen spectrum would have the same wavelength as Balmer, right? So fine. So Rh, you let it be as it is. Rh, since it is for helium, so z value is z value is 2 square 1 by nf square is 2 square 1 by ni square is 4 square so when you solve this or if you compare this with hydrogen right which is 1 by lambda is equals to rh 1 square to 1 by nf square minus 1 by ni square so always don't solve this expression for lambda in this kind of question okay now, if you see, if you multiply by 2 here, what you will get over here? Rh into 1 square, multiply by 2 square inside, so 1 by 1 square, minus 2 square inside, so it is 4, and uh, 4 will get cancelled, so 1 by 2 square will get here. So it is Nf should be 1 for this, and Ni should be So two to one transition we have, which gives the same wavelength as we get the wavelength in case of He plus Balmer series transition that is N4 to N2 transition, correct? So this is the question we have discussed, okay? So I hope you understood all this question. We'll come back again with some more interesting questions. Till then, take care, bye-bye.